Hey guys, so we made the long trip yesterday uh, from Calgary to the west coast of Canada here. Uh, we got a late ferry, came over to Vancouver Island, and this morning we are off to Salt Spring Island, which is just a smaller one of the Gulf Islands just off of Vancouver Island. So uh, we're gonna get there here shortly. And for this project, I mean, my main goal uh, is again, just trying to walk you through how to install your own lighting system. This is a fairly big one. So it gives us a good opportunity to really talk about some of the lights that we're gonna use that are pretty standard in a lot of applications that we do, um, as well as just give you a little bit more detail of them. So you know what you're gonna be getting if you're buying one of our kits or if you're looking for do-it-yourself lighting kind of what the different options are. We got some really tall trees that we're gonna be using some slightly brighter bulbs um, because we need to push that light up. We're gonna be doing some down lighting. Um, we've got some new deck lighting stuff that we're doing. And there's really, there's three properties on this, um, or sorry, three buildings on this property that we're all gonna be working with. So a bunch of different little things that we can do. So we we'll hope you guys enjoy this and we'll try and get you some real nice footage from, um, in my opinion, one of the best places in Canada uh, on the West Coast here, just off Vancouver Island. So enjoy the rest of this video. Hey guys, it's Cal with The Lighting Doctor here, and if you've ever thought of adding landscape lighting to your property, then go and check us out on YouTube. Subscribe on the button below, or go and search YouTube for Lighting Doctor with any questions you have about landscape lighting. We literally have hundreds of videos out there that you guys can watch that will walk you through every step of the process to go install your very own low voltage landscape lighting system. And on top of that, you can always go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca to access all kinds of our free resources like our free consultations and our try it before you buy it offers that help you design and not only design but feel and come up with the best plan for your landscape lighting project. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca and search Lighting Doctor on YouTube for more great videos. So how do you select the right size transformer for your project? It's really easy as long as you're using a good efficient LED landscape light basically what you do is you take all your lights so I'm gonna say for example I've got I've got 20 up lights and they're all uh, 5 watt LED lamps now the only thing to keep in mind is that the cheaper the quality of the light the less you pay for it there's something um, called their uh, their VA which is basically their efficiency of the light which if it says it's a 5 watt bulb um, the cheaper quality of the light is, it's actually going to be using closer to 10 watts. Sometimes I've seen as high as double the actual wattage. So you want to be careful if you're saving money on lights because you're buying something off Amazon or in Home Depot, just be aware you want to definitely size your transformer much bigger. If you're using a good contractor grade or professional light, um, you, you allow for maybe 20% extra of that, that VA, so a 5 watt light might be using six watts maybe seven watts so always plan for that any of the good lights are going to tell you that they're going to give you a va on the box which is going to tell you what you should actually plan your transformer for so let's say you're looking at our standard rs up light with a four watt led bulb which put which only uses about 4.2 uh, watts but let's say it's five just to keep math simple say we've got 20 of those lights 20 times five is we have 100 watts so the only thing we want to do is just make sure we size our transformer a little bit bigger than that so that we can add on later and just in case there is any uh, inefficiencies we have a little bit of room so we'll usually you know size it maybe 20 percent larger just to be safe if you know you want to add more later then just go a little bit bigger than that um, but basically that's it the reason that you still see a lot of 600 900 watt transformers out there again is because there's still a lot of um, I'll call them old school guys that still install halogen lights where you needed those bigger transformers because uh, there was just so much wattage uh, with all the lights that are on the system. If you're using uh, a good LED system, I'm gonna tell you that you probably don't need anything bigger than 300 watts because if you're putting that many lights on, you're probably gonna be spread out so far that you're gonna want another transformer anyway. So we basically carry two models. We carry a good stainless steel 150 watt and a good stainless steel 300 watt that's it it doesn't matter if you use a 300 watt and you only put a couple lights on it it's really not going to affect your system that that much um, you just probably don't need to spend the extra money to do that but if you wanted to and future expansion and all that kind of stuff you definitely can anything that's under 100 watts i'll tell you right now there's not a lot of good options um, there's a lot of econo transformers that we actually used to sell some of them and not that they were bad 
uh, but I just I know they don't last. We've quit selling anything that we get called out to repair or replace all the time, and that's why there's a very limited number of fixtures and products on our website um, because I don't want to sell you guys the garbage that I know is just going to break down. Uh, so we're going to give you, you know, the best of the best, the quality um, that's not going to break your bank account, but that we know is going to last. Um, but basically, in in short. That's how you size your transformer. Add up all your the wattage of all your lights, and then just make sure you size that transformer about 20% uh, higher. The least, less efficient, the cheaper the light, size it a little bit more. So another question I always get asked about low voltage wiring and transformers and all that kind of stuff is polarity. Does it matter? Do I have to have the same cable going to each light? And the answer is no. Um, basically, as long as you have one wire in your common tap and one in, in your uh, voltage terminal, whether it be a 12 volt terminal or 15 volt terminal, it doesn't have to be consistent throughout the run. As long as each one of those fixtures has two of those wires going to it, um, that's all that matters. And uh, really polarity is not an issue when it comes to low voltage lighting. So in short, do you need to really worry about polarity? No. I wanted to also talk about um, making your controllers Wi-Fi really cost effectively and also running multiple zones. There is transformers out there where you can have one transformer that runs say a zone for your front and a zone for your back. Um, in all honesty they're pretty uh, confusing to work and they get quite expensive and there's some limitations and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to tell you a real cost effective way of doing that especially if you only have like say a front yard and a backyard zone is is um, if it doesn't matter then just run them all off the same transformer But if you want to control them separately front yard backyard with simple on off functions The best way to do it is just with a simple Wi-Fi timer like this. So this one. This is one we've used for a long time. It's from uh, Wyon um, It works. It's weatherproof. It's great outdoors uh, There's tons of literally tons of models out there that you can use We just use this one because this is what we know and we haven't had a lot of issues with it um, but basically all we've done is we've taken just a standard transformer that all it has is a simple on off switch inside here um, that you flick on or off and to bypass that instead of putting like a photo cell we're now you know we got to be conscious of where we're putting that transformer so it's not in the shade so our lights don't come on too early what we've done is all we've done is two ways you can do this one is we basically just taken our Wi-Fi timer we plugged it into our outlet and then we've plugged our transformer into there sometimes the reason I like doing that is just because when you put these um, little things inside the box which I'll show you the Wi-Fi signal as in as as in isn't as as strong it's in some guys sometimes cause some issues but if you want to put it inside it's pretty easy um, you'll see the transformers and any of the good ones that you'll buy not the not the Malibu or Moon Rays or Hampton Bay or any of those garbage ones, but any a good solid stainless steel one is gonna have a setup like this, where you have an on off switch, and then you've got this little plug in here. And all you basically have to do is take this plug out and you plug your timer into there, and then you plug this back into there. And then all of a sudden that's inside, but this operates as what it would be like a photo cell. And all this is, if you had any kind of old timer or photo cell, it basically plugs into this um, kind of thing too. So that's how you make your system a Wi-Fi. And it doesn't matter if you have a smart home system and they make a compatible outdoor outlet, then just use that. If you have um, your plug-in on a Wi-Fi switch already that's inside the house, well then you don't even need that because basically you can just plug this in, leave it in the on position, and then you control everything from whatever your smart home system is. And the reason, I say that's a cost effective way because now if you want to do the front and the back it's typically going to be cheaper for you just to get two transformers two smart devices and have a front and a back zone as opposed to going and buying one of the the programmable uh, zoning ones and not that I've got one in my house um, I get I get my stuff at cost so I don't mind paying for it but I know that a lot of you and even myself if I had to pay a full price I might not be paying for that um, zoning option uh, because realistically it's not something that uh, we use a whole ton in a much more affordable way simple transformer Wi-Fi timer and you're set uh, mounting your transformer another question I get all the time in this case we just mounted it straight to the house straight to the structure this is a part of the house that nobody really sees it's well enough hidden we have our outlet um, and it's solid enough I don't have to worry about drilling through concrete or anything like that so in this case we just mounted it directly to the house try and keep it about 12 to 18 inches above the ground um, just because not that they put out a lot of heat but they can put out a little bit of heat and you just want to keep that you know above the ground 
Um, but if you don't have that option or it's uh, your house is concrete or you don't know what's there and you don't want to be drilling into the house, which I, I hate drilling into houses unless I know what's there. Usually what we'll do is I'll just go get a nice four by four cedar post because I know it's going to last. I might go to the deck section in my uh, home improvement store and get like a nice little cap for the top of my four by four post. I'll dig that in a bit, uh, bury that in, and then I'll just mount my transformer to that. And the reason I like doing that too is because then if you ever decide to move your transformer, um, you're not having to worry about patch up holes in, in your house. So a simple four by four post is a nice way to go and mount your transformer. It's clean, it's easy, um, and it's uh, it just eliminates you having to drill more holes into the side of your house. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on